Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I'm going to be changing out this old single pole, this P-O-L-E switch, and I'm going to replace it with a new Decora Plus switch, and uh, then I'm going to put on this kind of cover, so that'll be much nicer. And this is also a very old and dirty switch, so I'm going to replace it for aesthetic reasons. So let's test it out, see if it, first of all, see if it works. This is my... Uh, fluke voltage sensor and I'll put it on this terminal right here and that's hot. See the switch is off but this terminal is hot. There's another terminal right here and see the voltage sensor says this is off but I flip the switch on and you see how that works. So I'm testing out and I'm finding out that this old switch is operating fine. I just want to change it uh, for cosmetic reasons and because it's old and not very good. Now this switch right here is a three-way switch and it's off right at the moment. It has three terminals. Okay, one here, that's off. One here, that's on all the time. And one over here, which is currently off. Now watch this. Okay, this one's on all the time. I'll put my sensor right here. See, that's on. And over here. So that's a three-way switch. That's where you have two switches operating a light or a series of lights. So I replaced this one in an earlier video. and This one's working great. And I'd like to show you how you replace a single pole switch next to a three-way switch. So our sensor has told us that the circuit breaker is on. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the circuit breaker off. So with the circuit breaker off, we're gonna go ahead and test this terminal right here. This is the one that was hot all the time. Go ahead and check around every place else. And okay, that tells us that the circuit breaker is indeed off. Now I'll remove the switch. Notice it has the old straight slot screws. It's always a good idea to use a little razor knife uh, to score the paint right here so you don't pull paint off. There you go. So here's the old switch. We've got two old wires going to it. Notice that the wires have lost their coloring over the years. This wire right here was probably white and this one was probably black. Now it's in an older switch box a white wire is not necessarily a neutral wire. This is what is called a switch loop. They ran one cable which had a black and a white wire to the switch. And one of the wires was hot all the time and one of the wires was hot in a switched manner which would bring switched current to the light. At the time this was permissible to do as long as you recolor coded the white wire to black or red or blue or a hot color. White and gray were reserved for the color of the neutral wire. Just because they were supposed to color code the white wire to a hot color doesn't mean that they always did. That's why you may find white wires on switches in older switch boxes. Normally I would just cut the wires here and here, but they're so short that I need the extra length. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the terminals and remove the wires from the switch. This old switch is probably from the 70s or so. First, I'm going to vacuum out the box and clean it up. In a previous video, we found that the boxes of this system are grounded by putting one lead on the wire that is hot all the time and one lead on the metal box itself and I got about 117 volts AC. That shows that the box represents a return path to the panel. So in that way, we know that the box is grounded by the 1957 system, which looks something like this. So in order to take advantage of the grounded box, we're gonna use a nice quality switch with a self-grounding clip. That's this brass colored item right here. And this is going to ground this switch to this box. This is called a spec grade switch. It's a higher grade switch. And 
we now have the electricity off and I will double check to make sure it's off and it is. I've put red electrician's tape on the wire that's hot all the time and I put blue electrician's tape on the switched wire. So you've noticed we really didn't have to touch this three-way switch. There's just two wires that go to the single pole switch in a 1957 house. The ground wire is actually behind the box. And you see there's two brass color terminals on a single pole switch. And one of these wires goes to either of the terminals. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which terminal. And the grounding screw, I just have tightened down all the way. The switch says top right here. These spec grade switches have a back wiring system that's very different from a back stab system. You put it in here all the way. And tighten it down securely. The other wire goes to the other terminal. And tighten it down securely. Before I put the switch in the box, I'm going to use a couple wraps of black electrician's tape around the switch for safety. Okay, see it's, it's twisted a little this way. So before you screw it in, give it a counter twist like that. That should help you. Test it out with your cover to make sure the switches are aligned well. That's nice. That's nice. There, so we've got the switch cover nice and even all the way around. You can give, I'm gonna give this one another turn. All right, that looks pretty good. The moral of the story is that if your three-way switch is working properly and this switch is working properly, it's only a matter of two wires if there's no ground in your system, three wires if there is a ground. It's not very complicated. It's quite easy to change out a single pole switch. That's a regular everyday switch next to a three-way switch. And I use that self-grounding clip to ground to the old grounding system of this 1957 house. So there you go. That's how to install a single pole switch next to a three-way switch. This video was sponsored by absolutely nobody. So I just used all the tools that I really wanted to use, the ones that I thought were the very best. And I'll put links in my video description for my two fluke meter tester the 117 electrician's meter and the Fluke 1AC voltage detector. Those are, I work with those all the time. They're great. I'll put a link for the Kinepex electrical installation tool. Mine is 1000 volt insulated. They make them both insulated and non-insulated. I'll put links for both. And I use the Klein 1000 volt insulated screwdrivers. So those are all great tools and I'll put links for all of them in my video description. Okay, thanks! <music>